And now for our first Days with Zara Empowerment Seminar, brought to you by AT&T and Partnerships for Change. Our mission on Days with Zara is to bring you television that is inspiring and empowering. With that, we host the Days with Zara Empowerment Seminars, which is our way of getting into the community and giving back. We bring incredible speakers with our speaker series who share their story and ultimately show us how they made it, hence helping us take our lives to another level. So let's get to the speaker series. What's going to happen is I'm going to introduce our speakers. They're going to share their story with you. And then we have lawmakers who are here based in San Francisco, our different supervisors or our commissioners or whatnot, who really handle the business here within San Francisco. I had been doing quite a bit of work in Chinatown, which is the oldest Asian community uh, in the United States. And Chinatown, which is in the heart of the district that I now represent, has uh, some of the most incredible needs. Uh, we have low-income folks who are living four, five, six to a room. We have uh, folks who have been out of work for a very long time. We have scores, uh, hundreds of residents who, uh, who either haven't had a job or live on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. And uh, doing work in that community as well as in other neighborhoods in the district really got me fired up to want to make sure that city government could be, in, could be responsive not just to those of us that had a good education or had good jobs, but really responsive to everyone in San Francisco. So what are some things that people like me can just, you know, get out and do in order to improve their community hands-on? Well, I think um, everyone has an opportunity to serve in some capacity, uh, whether it be getting involved in a nonprofit organization, whether it be tutoring a kid, uh, whether it be contributing some money, if you can, to a cause that you care about, whether it be coming, at city, coming to City Hall and telling uh, us as your public servants what you want city government to do. Well, it started community volunteering. It started with a power plant in my community. A lot of us said, we don't need any more power plants. And so we, a lot of us started working in um, for that and we were successful. And then there was an opportunity that came with redevelopment in, in the Bayview. And so with that, there was a redevelopment has changed quite a bit. And so there was an opportunity for a lot of community involvement. And the way it was is that you had to be a part of the community in some way, either a homeowner, a renter, a student, and then you had to go out to your community and get them to elect you. So that was kind of my first elected office in the community because I was scared to death, but some little voice inside of me said, yes, you can, and so I did it. And then my son was diagnosed with cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, he was about 25. And so that really gave me another push. I mean, I, I decided that I didn't want to see any other mother's child go through this or any mother go through it. So I'm a new mom. Yes. And I, I had no idea what it was like to be a parent. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, there's nothing more in life than, yeah, nothing. I mean, I love my husband too, <laughs> equally. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but it's a, it's a, um, I just had no idea. And so it's, you go out and like even when you, if you teach or you see young people and you just want to like swoop them up or do something, you know? And so how did you get through this with your son? I mean, how did you gain the strength to just to get through just something like that? Trying to make a difference, making sure it didn't happen to anybody else's. I think that's really healing. And my son, uh, you know, we fought desperately, did everything we could, and he ultimately died. But he was able to see me in office. And, and he was there and so I felt it was all worth it I felt you know and I remember saying to him you better not die he said mom mom I will not I will not but if I do and so he really helped me a lot and and you find joy and you find a way of making a difference and so that's what helped me that's what propelled me and that's what my drive is I don't care what happens my drive and my center and my core is about making a difference for those who are there and you know what's so exciting to me about our job is that you can legislate for the future it's not just about today but it's about the future and I, I think we have two of the, of the oldest power plants in, in, in California now we have one because we were able to get rid of the, the bay the hunters point and there's a date uh, certain for getting rid of the last one. And so for me, it's really been a wonderful, wonderful 
what can people pull from in order to change their own community? Self-empowerment mm -hmm. that you can and that having faith in yourself that some that voice, some people come in me, I knew nothing. Mm. And I would say to myself, what are you doing? There was just something inside of me that would say, it's okay. The answers will come. And and indeed they did. And then I, I must say too, I came from a family. My mother was very involved in the community. In fact, there's a school named after her, you know, Lady Maxwell, because she was very, very much involved with community service and a and, and civic duty. And I also, you know, was a, a, a kid of the 60s and the 70s where we knew that we could. And we also realized that, you know, they didn't go to Africa, get slaves and say, well, let them do whatever they want to do. We changed that plan. We, did. we changed the plan. And so for me, the plan can change. And we just have to have a good plan and change it. What's the difference between that and speaker? I mean, well, the speaker runs the whole house. And basically, the speaker's like the king or the queen. Uh, they make all the decisions in terms of committee assignments and office space and how many staff you have, where you park in the <laughs> building, whether you can travel and how much your budget is. So they decide everything. And my job is really to keep the caucus in line, make sure that uh, the floor runs smoothly, make sure everyone knows when to get places on time, what's going to be happening on the floor, uh, what bills are coming up, if there's any controversial bills to try to get my members to work it out. Uh, so that is basically my job as the whip, just to kind of keep everyone in line, you know, get the whip out. What's maybe one of the harder things that you've been through that you pulled through and how? Okay, so I would say uh, probably the hardest thing is a campaign, getting elected. Uh, you are putting yourself out there on the line every day. Uh, you need to be able to raise money and to ask people to support you. And I think that is hard for a lot of folks who aren't brought up that way. Maybe women were uh, taught that if you do a good job that you're going to be recognized. But you actually have to kind of be out there and stand at the bus stops. You know, doors are going to get slammed on you. Sometimes you're on the phone. They don't want to vote for you. They're going to slam the phone down. Campaigning is probably the most difficult uh, part of this job, the most difficult thing that I've had to do in my life. You're running the African American Art and Culture Complex. Yeah. In addition to being a commissioner. Yeah. How are you feeling? I mean, what's what's it like right now? Um, it's a lot of work. I mean, the titles are great, but ultimately, the reason why I chose to become a part of the Redevelopment Agency Commission in the first place is to serve the community. And so, I'm really proud to be a part of uh, Redevelopment because of its impact on changing the environment, changing the physical environment. Um, one of the things that um, I'm not so proud of with redevelopment and one of the things that as a commissioner I try to work hard at is making sure that we are developing better relationships with people. We hope you enjoyed this empowerment seminar and we will be hosting our next one in the winter of 2011. So please check our website at dayswithzara.com for more details from up above every day words sing to turn into love song give yes give your heart and soul to me and life will always be love beyond rose